What happened? It's that link. You know how it's bigger? Yeah. It caught, it grabbed, it destroyed. Getting it where it won't throw a chain would be nice. Good morning, I can find where you Hey, do you guys carry 420 chain? So we want to take this thing off-roading today. Last night we sat down and made a list of everything we want to get accomplished. We need lock nuts for the rear wheels, front ones wouldn't hurt. We need to fix the steering, get a tighter radius, less slop. I'm also on the phone with the store um, to see if they have 420 chain. I'm on hold. Put nuts on the bottom of our steering bolts to tighten it up. We need to do uh, steering alignment. Uh, I need to do... Hey, uh, do you guys have 420 chain and chain links? But you don't have it? No, sir. Okay, thank you. I think the uh, the alignment wasn't correct. I guess I'm starting with taking two washers out, which is probably going to be too much. I hope we can get away with using these uh, 40 links. We don't have to go, you know, cannibalize our other stuff. That one over there was working fine. Yeah. Until the link caught something, and it immediately went tink, and then pieces flew. The whole, the 40 link just disintegrated. So I scrounged around and was only, so I scrounged around, scrounged around. So I scrounged around. Hey man, you scrounged around. So I scrounged around and I was able to find one 420 connecting link. Um, the 40 kind of works, but not really. As you can see, this is 420 chain and that's a 40 link. There's some slop in there, which we think is a, uh, uh, causing the chain to kick off in some cases. Sure ain't helping. Right. So what I'm going to try to do is stack one of these in between here um, just so it doesn't move around as much. Honestly, that might have, well, I'm not going to say it, but it's promising. This rear passenger side chain is way loose. So I'm gonna unbolt the engine, uh, tighten it up, and then also put our lock nut on the rear here so we won't lose a nut when we are going down the road. So we're about ready to go on a ride here. Um, we got the chains aligned the best we could. Ike right now is uh, putting the nuts on the bottom of our steering uh, uh, yeah. bolts. Turn it safe. Got some neighbors coming by on a golf cart. They were like, is that your newest video? It's awesome. I'm gonna see if they want to race. Yeah, you want to race? No? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> nah, you got it. Hey, to make it fair, he'll go in the dirt. <laughs> next to you, yeah. I'm ready to run that thing. I already tried, man. They don't want to do it. Yeah. Thing takes off. It squats. It squats. It literally squats when it goes. Yeah. It's awesome, man. And he 
things are bone stock. Yeah. So um, we're gonna do some more off-roading, but um, we're gonna fix the steering first. We're gonna tighten up the steering radius, make the steering more sensitive by basically relocating the steering rack, placing it further Moving up. Moving it forward. Yep. And then putting this there. Yep. Can you explain real quick how moving it in will give us more steering radius? Oh man, you're not gonna put me on the spot like that, are you? Okay, picture this arm is a rod. You're only gonna have two inches to move this rod. So we'll say two inches is gonna move my hand right here. Yep. If two inches were down here, I'm gonna move this back two inches. So I'm gonna to try to better explain what Ike was saying about um, different mounting positions for our steering rack. Let's say the screwdriver is our spindle. Um, if it's mounted all the way out here and we only have a limited amount of steering room, AKA uh, turns within the rack and pinion, we only get this much movement, you know, a few degrees. I'm not gonna say that's very many. However, the closer inward we mount the steering on the spindle, the more radius we're gonna get with that same amount of movement. This is both gonna make the steering more sensitive and we're gonna get a tighter turning radius. So we're getting close again. Uh, Ike's just welding a quick gusset on our new steering uh, rack to get a little bit of slop out of it. Uh, grabbing a tape measure for alignment so we can do the toe. It just threw torque converter everywhere. What? Yeah. Like I'm going and I just see like, woo! <laughs> the bolt was loose. <laughs> yep. Guess you tightened it. That guy. Let's see if we can go find it. Oh, uh, we're missing the brass collar. Yeah, I saw it all fly off. I heard it. Here's a good lesson, guys. Make sure all the bolts are tight before taking it out. Uh, this is an honest mistake. It can happen to anybody. It just seems to happen to John. So it'll be fine. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna give him a hard time about that. So, especially since you left me walking with my hands full, I can't even turn off the camera because I have torque converter in this hand and camera in this hand. Telling you guys, so much torque twisted the chassis off the line. And there's a car coming. Great, I think we see the most creative things come out of y'all. <laughs> Thanks. We just read by that and I was like, that's cool. <laughs> Thanks. Now we approach the wild laws like, is the baby breaking the go kart again? It is really loose, man. I see what's happening. Oh man, we got some camber in the rear. Of course, here, ladies and gentlemen.
was very satisfying. This thing should not exist. You know what I mean? It doesn't make any practical sense. But this is the most fun I've had since we started messing with go-karts. What do you think of that hill I went up, man? That, that was, was nuts. Awesome. I was like, there is no way. Next thing you know, big cloud of dust, dust clears, Ike's up the hill. <laughs> it was so cool. Dude, it didn't even stop, man. It I just know. kept going. Yeah. So. I do have some bad news. What? Uh, the rear wheel, the rear wheels are developing quite a bit of negative camber. You see that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why they're getting loose. That's why the chains keep coming off, man. That's why we don't use grade five bolts. That's why we don't use grade five bolts. It doesn't off-road very well, but we didn't design it with off-roading in mind. We chose fixed suspension. Uh, this thing is purpose-built for uh, pavement or just flat surface launches which it does pretty well. Uh, we just have a little bit of a problem with wheel hop, which we need to take care of. Negative camber is gonna throw the chain too. And these engines are stock. We can officially say it has so much torque, it twisted some stuff. Vin Diesel would be proud. The chickens are in the garage, uh, but we're gonna have lots of fun things to clean. We're gonna have some fried chicken! Anyway, that's all we got for this one, guys. We got to thank Go Power Sports for all these parts. Links in the description. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Cars and Cameras Reviews. Check Ike out on Isaac, YouTube. It'll be fine. Isaac, it'll be fine. Um, what do you think? I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah. Uh, but we need some tweaking, but we'll get it. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of going backwards. Like uh, fixing the rear camber is going to be a little bit of a big deal because we're going to have to cut stuff and bend it back not gonna be a big deal bend it back yeah it's just gonna keep bending no not if we put the strut things like we did on the oh front. true 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 it'll be fine it's very true all right we're just yep. gonna bend it back then yeah there ain't no way mm -mm, y'all can call me whatever y'all want i am not doing 100 in this thing <laughs> I, I might do, do 40 i'd be happy with 40. i'd do 100 if it were in the back of a pickup truck there we go anyway you, you sitting in it yeah all right Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs> what an amazing creation.